Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Hello there everybody. Today we're going to talk about another one of my favorite bands and an important one in my own therapy. The band is called Queen Drive. Now, the band was formed in 1980, I believe, in Bellevue, Washington. The original members were guitarist Michael Wilton, Chris DeGarmo, drummer Scott Rockenfield, bassist Eddie Jackson, and lead vocalist Jeff Tate. My first introduction to this band, which would become one of my favorites, was a Kiss concert in, I believe, 84 or 85. Went to see them in Nassau Coliseum. Our mom, um, my friend's mother drove us there. We got in, the lights went down. And if you're familiar with Queen Strike, they opened with warning. And right away, I was captivated. In my opinion, Jeff Tate, one of the greatest singers of all time especially in this genre, you'll find them out there. There's plenty that have the control over the voice, the range. But to be in a band that gained as much popularity as this, I think it's rare, very rare. And the guitarists were great. The music writers, the like every piece of this band uh, had greatness, in my opinion. And I think that's why when they come together... And in those periods of time in musicians' history, magic happens. I won't get into the personal stuff, because this is more of how it affected me and how I use it for my own music therapy. But yes, I guess there's a break between the lead singer, the band, other, other members had already left and they tried out new types of bands, I mean, new members. And I'll say this, up to a certain point, Queensryche was amazing. Then they changed. I would say, just like I consider Kiss and Metallica, I kind of respect where they go with their music, their creativity, what they're feeling, the times are changing. I get it for the most part, but I didn't follow and I wasn't captivated by what Queen Drake split into. And I think he was able to use the, when I say he, Jeff Tate was able to use the name of the band until the courts decided they gave it to the original guitarist members. And he went on to create, I think Operation Mind Crime was the band. He's a singer who had the best voice ever, lost it for a bit, got it back, and then maintained it basically to this day. You can watch concerts, live uh, videos, and that's where it really counts. When you can perform your music better live than on your albums, which isn't a hard thing to do for most bands, but when you have that powerful voice, that control, to do it for hours at a time on stage consistently, he's a master Jeff Tate will be always up there, no matter what I hear, because I don't know whose side to take, you know, who is the bigger asshole. In my opinion, if you're going to, I might be wrong, but you're going to bring your daughter on tour, you all have to be honest with it. If you're all friends, like it was me and my friends, I'm sure that would be something, it would be okay, but if you're not the best of friends and you're bringing family members in and things like that, you want to communicate that, your honesty, and say, look, we know you're the greatest singer ever. But we can't, you know, whatever the problems were. I think it's just one of those things where you don't communicate. Things simmer too long and then they blow up. So unlike Gene Simmons, who's an asshole for the most part, I don't know much about them personally to say who was right or wrong. Now, Chris DeGamo was given the credit as the genius behind most of the music and... um. 
Jeff Tate and Kind and the other guitarists, when you hear these guys play together, you can feel the magic because, in my opinion, most bands, if they don't record their music properly and they play live with one guitarist, it the wholeness, the effect drops out immediately. I'll give a quick example. Um, I, I mentioned it the other night. I was doing a live stream. Motley Crue. Motley Crue, in my opinion, has some great albums. They changed, you know, got a little different, which is fine. But I went to see them live a couple of times, and they were horrible. And in my opinion, oh, I play guitar a little bit, so I'll preface that. I'm not a musician in that sense. Played for a while. In my opinion, they made their album so good. And you overlay guitar, right? So he's one guitarist, and there's only one guitarist in the band, Motley Crue. I think it was Mick Mars. So he writes the music. He gets it on the tracks. He lays it all out. Double, triple guitar riffs that's known, you know. But what happens is when you go into your lead section on an album, you still got the other layers of the rhythm guitar. And live, unless you're playing a backup recording, it drops out. And you can feel it. It's a change. It, it feels like it's, there's something missing. In my opinion, that's just me. Some people, hey, they might like it better. You know, not everybody could be the Beatles. So... Queen's right, the two guitarists, the riffs they did together, the harmonizing is incredible. The drummer is, a, is amazing, bass player, the, the music writing, everything really came together. Now, for me, I'm there from the beginning. So, The Warning, first album, technically, if you want to get into the 80s with The Myth and The Mob, it's like bands they had, and they had put out a demo, one of my favorite songs ever, The Lady Wore Black. And here's an instance right there. Listen to the album recording of The Lady Wore Black. Then go listen to the 1984 live version. And the song is improved a thousandfold. Gripping, it's heartfelt. It's just a, it's one of the important songs to me. I'll get into that a little bit later. So, the Warning, Rage for Order, the first two albums, and for me, they were great. I didn't really, I can't say I cared back in the day for, um, like, glam bands, I guess you would call them. Although, if you consider Kiss, that's the makeup, right? It's my favorite band ever. But this just seemed like music that hit me. It got to me. I saw them live. I was blown away. Now, I'm not sure if Rage for Order was even out yet. When I saw them, I think they only had their first album. Yeah, because that was 86, I believe, Rage for Order. Both amazing song, amazing albums with great songs on them. Then they came out with Operation Mindcrime, which some say is the greatest uh, concept album ever. Uh, it had a whole theme. It ran through. It revolved around a junkie named Nikki who was brainwashed into performing assassinations for an underground movement. He's torn over his misplaced loyalty and the cause of his love for Mary, a reformed hooker turned nun. <laughs> he even tells you who the vocals are given. Um, so this whole concept album comes out, and that's when they get insanely popular. I think it's 1988. And they can't do no wrong. Every song on the album is good. Most of them are great. Empire comes afterwards, another huge success, and I think this is the height of their success. I stuck with them a little longer, probably until the guitarist Greg DeGamo left. So growing up from the early 80s, big fan of Kiss, you know, ACDC, Led Zeppelin, Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, in a way I feel different when you find a band so for me growing up with kiss it's not like i found them or they they feel you know it's, even though it's my favorite band it's, it's to find a band to be there not know about them beforehand it's a little special for me so through the years they've been a band i really loved learned some of the songs after the guitarist left and the 
single left. I think he stuck around. They did Promised Land. Heart of the Frontier. Oh, here, here in the Now Frontier. And there were some good songs on them. Sign of the Times. Um, there's another song like I Am I is on one of those albums. And in the late 90s, the guitarist was replaced. And like I said, I, to me, they put out good music. Just maybe not hitting me the same way. Even when they started breaking up. I like the new singer they got, the new band that uh, Jeff Tate put together. His acoustic stuff, his small performances in theaters are amazing. I don't find that same magic with the new front runner or the new singer in the band. Meaning, if I'm going to listen to Queensryche or Queensryche songs live, I'm probably still always going to go look for Jeff Tate first. Maybe if the original guitarist was still there, just one of them is still there. But in my opinion, that voice can't be replaced. Even if he's older now and can't hit the notes, he's good at maintaining his voice enough to know where his limits are. So I think in 2004, they had Operation Mind Crime 2. They had done some revisions to their um, tours and redid their sets. They would cover sections of other albums. Really cool to do it. Um, they've worked with like, you know, Ronnie James Dio. They were really, um, they really paid homage to him. Their albums as they progressed didn't really, like I said, capture me, but it will always hold a, you know, a special place in my heart. I think they recorded 15 studio albums, an EP, some DVDs, things like that, but they're not, weren't in the mainstream. However... I'll sort of end this up with how it becomes important for my music therapy podcast, a thing I'll do, which goes under my foundations for wellness and mental health type thing. So with my fiance, we were together for like 16 years and I explained like 13 of those years were her fighting cancer. She eventually lost the battle, but she was from Guyana she had come here and she became a PA, a physician's assistant. She was into soul, R&B, um, little jazz and reggae. Oh, music clashed, although I appreciate a lot of music. It's not something I'm going to. And trying to get her to get into my music and vice versa, we came upon common ground, like appreciating and really getting into it. And Queensryche was the one band she really got into made her tear up. It moved her, his voice. She couldn't believe how talented he was. And one of the songs, particularly the lady wore black was like our song. It was my song to her. I would play it on guitar. So after she passed away and I went through a dark time and and I had to, I had to rebuild myself, reforge myself and come back better than before. I noticed that I had a major problem with music. Any music would hit me right to the core, would go right past my filters. There was no breathing meditation at the time because I was lacking in discipline and keeping up with it. You know, it took me I, the, all those years I just to stay sane and be strong for her just collapsed afterwards. So music was a real um, important thing for me that I had to give up in a way. One of the things I mentioned is I still haven't touched my guitar, which is a crime. However, I'm building up to that and I'm right near getting ready to tackle that beast. But all music, I had to avoid it. I just, and it didn't matter because something that could make you feel good a minute in hits a certain chorus and it resonates with the the tragedy or the trauma or the uncomfortableness of a situation, so on and so forth. And knowing that the real heart of it was Queensryche, I couldn't listen to it. I tell the story a couple of times. I went to see a cousin play, young kid. He was real young when they got together, 12 years old, even younger. I went to see him in Coney Island. I had like a breakdown and I had to leave. Um, and I knew... 
that I would have to use my breathing and meditation techniques to work through this. And that's where I'll end this in saying I went for the strongest, most um, damaging music and examined that first. So I used Queensryche. I would put the songs on, do my breathing and meditation exercises, and I worked at it. And I'll explain this in the, um, I guess I'll call it my music therapy <laughs> stream. Just it's, it's not even going to be a long one, but it'll summarize the breathing meditation techniques. Or technique, it's just tools. There's so many out there. Anybody could look this stuff up. But you use it with the training of your mind. And I was able to listen to all my music again especially Queensryche. And yes, sometimes they bring out a little sadness in me, maybe make me think and possibly cry, but it's not an overwhelming, crippling despair, plunge into depression, um, losing control of my emotions and not able to gather myself. Now, all music is enjoyable again. I learned how to transform the feelings, the thoughts, the effects it was having on my body, my mind, my thoughts, patterns, worked through it, and got better. And Queensryche is a very special band for me, and that's why also. I wish you would have gotten to Kiss a lot. I mean, I guess she enjoyed it, because I would leave it on doing things you know, writing and stuff. But Queensryche, amazing band. The first several albums are just top-notch, amazing music. Look at them live. Search uh, Queensryche 1984, Japan, all those songs. All the, the performances are just great. I still think the band has promise in the sense that they make good music, just not for me and that, you know, in the way that it grips me, but it's not because I have any issues with music anymore. Now I'm looking to branch out. I'm looking to find other music that moves me in different ways. I joke with a friend online about um, all the ba bad rap music she plays. We talk in discord and things like that. And it's really a joke, but I notice that some of them that I like, and I analyze the feelings and like, I can go back and look and respect someone like Eminem for the talent they have, Wu-Tang Clan, Cypress Hill. And I think music's important for people. It can give you what you need at certain times. And then we can add movement into this, right? I mean, I'm talking breathing and meditation, possibly sitting quiet, you know, analyzing what you're feeling with the music, how it affects you. Let's not talk about the studies and the scientific evidence about how therapeutic and awesome music is for people. And it gets them moving. Well, I'm not a person who likes to dance in that way. However, that is another aspect. Queensryche, give them a shot. Listen to them. The older stuff, preferably live performances from the early 80s, even some um performances leading up to 2000s then you'll might not be able to find the, the old mid band members getting you know in that sense but jeff tate um even the new singer like i said is pretty good they are an important part of my life in that way i'll always love the band of that time period and as i explained uh it helped me with therapy in a sense i'll get into that with another podcast but check out Queens, right? Give them a listen to. And you can see reaction videos, by the way. We could search like um, Take Hold of the Flame. What an amazing song. There are people who do reaction videos to it. Because they're like, they do reaction um, v videos. And some people recommend, oh, you got to listen to this band, Queens. You could see the looks on their faces. Like you would think like people like um, Journey and we'll see probably they have these amazing voices. But. You've never heard Jeff Tate. You gotta listen. I hope everybody's doing well. I'll talk to everybody soon.